Hello, friends. Okay, you ready to make some leg warmers? These are so super cute. For me, they're like more like boot cuff warmer deals. I don't really know what to call them, you know, um, because I don't, I'm not into like the fitness thing and all that. So what I intend to wear mine with is a, well, you've seen the pictures, a pair of leggings, some boots, and then... <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm so sorry. And then these sort of accompanying the boots around my lower calf to create an extra layer of warmth. Also, these can be worn if you're a cowgirl boot wearer like I am. These can be fully worn inside your cowgirl boots with just the little calf cuff kind of sticking up. It's not one of those fancy real elaborated decorated cuffs. That'll be coming up later on specifically for wearing inside boots but I thought these would be so cute so fun to accompany with some leggings and some short booty type boots and it uses a very unique stitch I'm calling it the tilted granny stitch I don't know what it's actually called I am going to leave a link in the description down below of the video where I first discovered this stitch she doesn't call it anything either I think she calls it like stitch number 227 you know she doesn't have a name for it either but it, I'm not going to <clears throat> claim ownership of this stitch I got this stitch from a fellow youtuber who is fantastically talented I believe her channel is called creative crochet and she doesn't really name her stitches she just numbers them so I'm personally for the sake of this pattern calling this the tilted granny because to me that's about what it looks like and but I'm not the owner of this stitch I just used it to make these here is where we are going to be putting our aesthetically pleasing buttons they're completely non-functional so let's get started on the pattern what we're going to need is two hooks a 4.5 millimeter hook that we will use for the majority of the pattern and then a 4 millimeter hook that we will use for our calf cuff just because we want this cuff to be a little bit tighter and a little bit more secure around our leg and a one skein of Joanne Joanne fabrics big twist brand less than one skein to make both it is 380 yards and they recommend a hook five millimeter but any worsted weight yarn will work with this any worsted weight yarn will work with this and I give you the yards and reference so that you know it takes one of these to make two less than one of these to make two and this is a total of 380 yards so if you have a worsted weight skein that's 380 yards or less or I'm sorry or more you know you're covered you know you're more than covered sorry I'm not speaking right this is going to be another one of those professional tutorials <laughs> let's get right into the pattern okay using our four millimeter hook because we are starting with the calf cuff we this project will be worked from the calf down and it doesn't have to be a short leg warmer like I made that's just my personal taste and preference. You can make these as long as you want. Okay, we're going to slip stitch and chain 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, and 12. Turn and working in the back bumps only. We're going to single crochet in the second stitch and in every, I said stitch, but back bump, and every back bump to the end. Chain one and turn. Okay, my last back bump. Chain one, turn. Now in the, this is going to be the same for every row. The first stitch of the row and the last stitch of the row we will work the full stitch meaning we're going to work under both loops like a regular single crochet now for the remaining stitches 
we will be working front loop only. And if you're new to crochet, this is the top of a full stitch with the two loops. The loop closest to you right here is called the front loop or in patterns you will see it as front loop only or FLO. This one that's furthest away from you is called the back loop. Again, in patterns you will see it as back loop only or BLO. With this, we are working through the loop furthest away from us, the back loop only. To my last stitch now, I am going to work through both loops, the full stitch. Just like that. And this is the repeat. You will chain one, turn, work through the full stitch again, and then proceed to work through back loop only until you get to the last stitch where you will once again work through both loops. And you will do this, pardon me, I have to refer to my pattern. You will do this for 36 rows. Sorry, this is a fresh new pattern. I just came up with it yesterday. I've got it typed up on my computer because it is going to be available in my Etsy shop as well. So you will do this for 36 rows. When you are all done, also this pattern, we will not be working in the rounds. We are going to work a flat panel and then we're going to seam it together when we are done. The reason for this is I did not want one of those seams that is obvious and starts going sideways up. I wanted this to be straight and even. And so I feel the best way to do that. Remember this, if you're making hats that don't have stitches that require you to go back and forth, just around. Um, I feel like this creates a nice, clean, straight seam that, yes, it's a seam. It's not the most obvious seam, and it's not, you know, jetting off to the side either. So that's how we're going to do this, a full flat panel. So make your 36 rows of your ribbed calf ribbing, and when you're done, come back and I will show you what we're going to do next. It's very, very easy pattern. You're gonna love it. <laughs> okay, now that we have completed our ribbing, we're gonna go ahead and begin working on the body of the leg warmers. So, like I said before, this is going to be an open work layout. We'll just seam it in the end. So, chain three, one, two, three. Now we're going to skip a stitch. This is a stitch right here. The great thing about working our ribs the way we did, our ribbing the way we did with the regular single crochet on both ends is just simply pulling it apart a little bit. You can see every single stitch that we would work into. This being the first one, this one right here being number two, three, four. So pretty much everywhere there is an indent at the end of that row is a stitch. Everywhere there is an, a, a groove facing out, at the end of that row there is a stitch and they are clear and easy to see all along. So whenever I say skip a stitch, this is what I mean. We just worked the equivalent of our first double crochet. So as you can see, we've got this protruding ridge at the end of that is a stitch. We're gonna skip that, and in the indented portion, ridge, we're going to work a double crochet, and here's how we create the tilted granny. Wrap around the post of the stitch. Just come right around the post of the stitch, pull up a loop, and pull through two. There we go, don't split your yarn. <laughs> As if we're starting to make another double crochet, then we stop. Wrap around, come around the granny post, I'm sorry, come around the double crochet post again, pull up a loop, <clears throat> and pull through two again. Almost seems like we're working, <clears throat> excuse me, almost seems like we're working a double crochet decrease. 
then you're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops that are on your hook. And without chaining one, we're going to skip one. This ridge right here has our next stitch over. We're gonna skip that and into the indented ridge, we will work a double crochet. And then immediately start making our next tilted granny. Yarn over, work around the post of the double crochet, yarn over again, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops. Stop at that point, <clears throat> yarn over, work around the post of the double crochet and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, stop, yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. So pretty much for the rest of this row, everywhere you see a indented section, I hope I'm, I'm being understandable with that. <laughs> I don't always know words, you know. Everywhere it dents in, at the end of that row is our next stitch. Everywhere where it's protruding out, we're gonna skip that stitch. So, you have your ribbing that goes in. That's the stitch you're gonna work into. So I'll work a couple more of these with you and then I'll leave you to it. And after this first row, it gets super duper easy because the stitch is so easy. It's easy to remember as well and feel free to use it. I'm going, like I said before, I'm gonna leave a link. Uh, I actually reached out to the woman and asked her, what is the name of your stitch? And she said it doesn't have a name. She just came up with it. So please go check out her uh, YouTube channel. This woman is what you would call a true talent. She comes up with all these stitches. I literally don't know how she does it. She's fantastic. Okay, wrap around. You're going to skip this stitch here and into this one. Work your double crochet, wrap around your hook, pull up, pull through two, wrap around, come around the post, pull through two. So I'm going to be quiet now and just work a couple. Okay, go ahead and finish all the way to the end. Here we are coming up to the end of this row and I've got one stitch left. It doesn't look like a stitch, it just looks like a little end knot. Trust me, it's a stitch. If you don't work it, your stitch count will be off. And so my last stitch will be the same as my first, a single, cro I'm sorry, a double crochet. Get in there, there we go. Okay, now the rest of the pattern is just a repeat of this. We're going to repeat for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows total. Okay, let me get this next row started for you and then this will be your one row repeat. You're going to chain three for your first double crochet now, ignoring this very first stitch, because this is, this is our double crochet, you're going to skip this stitch and work in the next. And how that looks on the side is at the, at the opposite end of the tilted, to tilted granny stitch. So here and here and here, these are where you're going to work your tilted 
granny stitches. So you'll make your double crochet and then split your yarn every other stitch like I do. <laughs> there we go. Then you're going to skip one, which is basically the one you skip is right in the center of this, right top center of the stitch. You're going to work what looks like the join, like where the two stitches touch, hold hands. That's where we're going to work all of our stitches for all eight rows. Please don't split. Thank you. <laughs> it seems like every time I try to work that first, that first one, it splits on me every other time. <laughs> I just blame that on the yarn. It's good yarn, but it's it's a little bit splitty. All right. There we go. Okay, so this is your repeat for eight rows. Come back whenever you're done with eight rows, and I will show you how we're going to add the boot or ankle cuff. Okay? It's so super easy. So super easy. I'm going to jump on here real quick and show you how round two is going to end, because it's not going to end like like it's not going to have a big space in other words sorry words again they're very hard for me <laughs> so you'll see that we essentially have three stitches at the end of the row two over the tilted granny and then our turning chain so go ahead and work your regular granny stitch well tilted granny stitch it's not a regular one <laughs> but work it as you regularly would don't split I got a fly in my face. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Sorry, it's just, it wasn't, I didn't even know it was in the house until I started filming. And all of a sudden it's like, hey, what you doing, buddy? What you doing? Right in my eyeballs. Anyway, I'm not editing that out. <laughs> then go ahead and work your double crochet for your turning chain. Okay, there we go. Chain three. Turn. And go ahead and just commence to what we were normally doing. We see two stitches here because this one is already a used stitch for the double crochet here. So you're going to skip this one and start your next round of tilted granny stitches. <laughs> it's kind of funny when I say it out loud. It's like, why is granny tilted? What you doing to granny? Is granny drinking? <laughs> It was the only name I could think of for it. Bless her heart. I kind of wish she had named it. Because this is not the official name of this stitch. I'm just using this name just for this one pattern because I just didn't know what else to call it. It looks like a granny stitch, but it's like tilted. What, the uh, YouTube play button stitch? We can go with that. It looks like a play button. <laughs> it's a darling stitch. She's got some wonderful and creative stitches on her channel. I can just get lost for hours watching her uh, showcase these stitches. She's very talented. She's got one video where it is like a, she makes a poncho, but she makes it into <clears throat> like a child sized dress. It is absolutely unique. You've got to check that video out. Here we go. And <clears throat> this row is going to end the exact same way. You see, you're gonna have your three stitches on the end, your third stitch being the turning chain. So go ahead and work your tilted granny, then work your turn and work your double crochet in the turning chain, and then just keep going that. So I just wanted to pop on and show you that so that you didn't think that you got your stitch count off. You absolutely did not. You will end after making this stitch you will end with a total of three stitches. So it's just these two are gonna be worked side by side. Okay, y'all, be back whenever we're all done with our eight rows. I have worked my eight rows. Now we're ready to start making the boot and ankle area cuff using our same 4.5 millimeter hook, chain 12, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Turn our work and working in the back bumps. 
second back bump from the hook, start working your single crochet. my last stitch my last back bump there we go now what we're going to do turn your work long ways like this to where you have your last row you worked going up and down and in the very first stitch up so we're already working out of the very first stitch of our last uh, row so in the next stitch up, work a slip stitch. Oh, that was graceful. <laughs> work a slip stitch, that was graceful again. Okay, I'm not even gonna edit this out either. This is real life, people. <laughs> and then in the next stitch up from that, work another slip stitch. There we go. Without chaining or anything, let your, let your yarn just come around the front here. So we're going to turn our work so that we're gonna work back down the other end and just let your yarn come over your work like this. Now, just like we did for this, we're going to work the full first stitch and the full last stitch. To make sure that you're not working in one of your slip stitches, just count 11 stitches up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. See, that looked like a stitch right there. Oops, that looks like a stitch right there, but it's actually my first slip stitch. Here is my second slip stitch. This is my first stitch here. So if you're ever confused, oops, which one is my stitch? Just count eleven stitches from the end to the base. Okay, so working in my first stitch, my first stitch of both loops then working the back loops only until the last stitch. And up to my last stitch, and I'm gonna work both loops just like we did before. Chain one and turn. And working through both loops again. This is going to be the repeat. Let me get a little slack on my yarn. Make sure that whenever you turn, it looks like an L. This is your working edge here. So then we just start working the back loops again. is a lot easier to see which stitch is our last stitch and I'm going to work through both loops of my last stitch and once again we're going to on our working edge we're going to slip stitch into the next two stitches up so slip stitch and slip stitch turn without doing any kind of chaining or anything. Now my work looks like this. And starting in your first stitch, which I know my first stitch is right here. Oops, my first stitch is right here because the next two stitches from my hook are going to be my slip stitches. But it can be confusing whenever you're looking at your work like this this legit looks like a stitch, but it's not. So, working in my first stitch, both loops, then I commence to doing my back loop only. This is the repeat all the way to the end. When you get to the end, I'll show you how we'll work that last stitch, that last ribbing round. Just about to finish up my last two rounds, I'm gonna show you how we're going to do that. You will chain one, work your first stitch and then work the rest of the row as usual my last stitch and there it is now I will slip stitch into the top of this turning chain right here 
turn my work and this is our very last row since we only worked one slip stitch we will skip the first slip stitch and this is our first workable stitch right here and commence to working your back loop only as usual last stitch there we go okay you will chain one and cut pull that on through leave a nice long tail for sewing grab your darning needle thread your needle okay now bring your work together to form a tube and pull through both sides then turn and we're going to start working back loop only on both sides so that we can continue to create this ribbing effect so we go into the back loop of this side and the back loop of this side and just pull through. And we're going to do that all the way down. And I will be back whenever I am to the point where we start sewing this part together and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, my last two stitches of the ribbed cuff, back loop, back loop, whip stitch it. And then I'll show you the effect that creates and why it's important to get the back loop of this end and the back loop of this end. Oops, I didn't even show you that on camera. Here we go. The of the two loops, back loop of this end and back loop of this end. Pull through. And this is the effect it creates. Here we go. And so it keeps our seam consistent. All right. Now let's carry on with the body of the leg warmers. I just try to find two sections. No two sections are gonna match like, like they match here. It's not gonna match here. So just do your best to try to find something that matches good enough, like that. Oops. I'm gonna probably have to cut another piece of yarn. Doesn't seem like mine is gonna be long enough. <clears throat> Here we go. So I pull up to see where I just worked through and try to find a couple of stitches to work through next to it. There we go. Try to find a couple more stitches. And that's it pretty much. And then whenever you get back down to here, where things start lining up stitch for stitch, you're just gonna go through back loop and back loop once again until you're done. Then you can weave in your ends. And then you can sew on your buttons, now they're non-functional, they're just for aesthetic, but you can sew on your buttons whatever colors you like, black or brown or tan, real pretty colors. And there you go, then it's done. All done and you've got leg warmers. Where's my other one? Boom. I love them, I love them. <clears throat> Cannot wait till it gets cold enough to wear them. So, all right you guys, thank you so much for watching. If you found any help from this tutorial please let the algorithm know by giving the video a like let me know by giving the video a like a comment if you want to see what I have coming up next and you can tolerate my verbal spaghetti please subscribe because I've got a lot a lot of future pattern ideas I absolutely am obsessed with crochet I am miss crochet so please subscribe so you can see what I have coming up next and check out what I already have on my tutorial
sorry, on my channel. Check out the tutorials I already have on my channel, I meant to say. There's some more of that verbal spaghetti for you. Okay, guys, love you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.